Well, guess what? We are talking about amenities. We're talking about the top amenities. And, um, you know, I, I, I didn't think I could do this with anybody else but John because John's in the data just as much, if not more than I am. And he's seeing stuff, I'm seeing stuff. And when the two minds come together, yeah. really uh, a lot of similarities, you know, we'll, and I, yeah. you know, I'll, I'll let John take it away here in a second. But um, one thing that I, I love doing with John, it's, it's always fun when we have a conversation. It's like, you thought like you were like, you had figured something out and like we had both figured it out, you know? And it's like, sharing that knowledge together and it, it just it's powerful and it's really cool stuff so glad to be on here with john yeah i'm glad to be on here with you as well man i mean you're like the one person out there that i can go back and forth with at the complete high level and break down all these different all the data all the information all the insights and just go back and forth for hours so um always enjoyable being on here with you thanks i appreciate that okay so um Let's get into it, guys. I'm going to share my screen because we we do – this is a workshop. I hope you guys, if you've ever come to anything, whether that John does or me or workshops or events, you got to take notes because we have a lot of good information. And I every single time I do one of these, someone comes in, they're like, I wish I'd taken notes. So I've started to preface all these things. Pull out some paper or a notepad on your computer, whatever type. Take notes while you're listening to this because we're going to drop some information and some data. If you have questions, please put them in the comments. We're going to try to answer them as they come in. Um, it's going to be more of a discussion lesson based um, with a with a little bit of a presentation. And so um, without further ado, uh, let me get it, pull it up here so that people can see and we will get going. Yeah, okay. uh, there we go. just a preference what Kenny said there of taking notes there if Kenny and I are extremely detail oriented and we do not give out a lot of fluff. And so we will be going into a lot of detail and going through different, very important things and uh, with a lot of detail. So you need to take a lot of notes is what I'm trying to get across. Um, so please take notes as you go through this. Here we go. Okay, nice. there we go. We can see it. Everybody can see it. Great. Um, yes, this is going to be recorded, Inza. Um, you can actually get the details for it from it, I think from StreamYard afterwards. It's also in my Facebook group, the STR Data Host. So if you're not in there, uh, join that group. It's all about data. Um, but yes, it'll be recorded so you guys can rewatch this. Uh, we're going to shoot for, try to do under an hour, guys. Um, be respectful of your time because it's Friday, right? Okay. So what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about, so obviously the amenities, but guess what? It varies and it varies per market. Um, and it varies per guest demographic. I mean... John, with TechVestor and your properties, are all your guests the same across every single market? Of course not. No, nope. there's tons. Of, I mean, we have almost 100 homes, right? And so they're, they're, they're different all across all the different markets. Even within the same market, we have different demographics depending on what side of the city that we're on and the type of home that we actually end up getting, which is something that we're going to get into. But yeah, so I'll let you keep going. Yeah. So and, and then so we're going to talk about markets. We're going to talk about guest demographics and the different type of guest demographics. And then we're going to get into the actual amenities because that's why you guys are here, right? You want to know which amenities. It's not the fluff. You want to know the actual amenities and you probably want to know some numbers with that too. So we're going to talk about that. And then finally, at the very end, if you guys stay till the end, we're going to reveal some other ways you can maximize revenue beyond amenities, beyond just having to throw money and invest in amenities. There's other ways of free ways. There's paid ways to get information um, and strategies to maximize your revenue. So it's not just amenities drive revenue, but other things as well. And we want to share those with you. So let's get into it. Okay, John, let's talk about markets. Um, if I said, so I, I guess I want to throw like a little bit of a, a um, not, not a curveball, but just kind of a question. I mean, yeah. if I said, hey, John, if I came to you, without any, like you didn't know me or any markets I was in. And I said, hey, John, should I buy, uh, let's say, uh, should I buy a hot tub? What would you ask me? What would I ask you? Oh, okay. Interesting. <laughs> so I know, right? I was like, yeah, you did, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right off the bat, throwing a curveball. So, I mean, the very first thing is like you're saying, hey, should I buy a hot tub for my Airbnb, right? And, and the reality is it's like, well, it depends. It 100% depends, right? Where are you located is the number one question that I would ask because it all depends on where you're located. Now, a hot tub, I'm sure most people know, 
is obviously one of the main amenities that is out there, but it is not an amenity that you need in every single Airbnb across America or the world for that matter, right? And so my first question would be, where, where are you? Where is your home, right? The, right off the bat, where are you? And I think that's obviously why we're, you know, we're starting off here with markets. <laughs> yeah, like I said, you already... <laughs> It's funny, guys. Like I, I uh, probably should have prepped John on that question before no, we started, fine. but it popped in my head because I knew what he was going to say. Because we're like-minded in how we're thinking about this, it starts with the where, right, John? Like you mentioned that. Yeah. So why is that though? Can you explain that and and kind of teach that to us? Yeah, of course. So I'll I'll start off with a really simple example to paint a picture. It's too hot in in Florida to sit in a hot tub. You know what I mean? In most places and for most of the year, it's too hot to sit in a hot tub. Therefore, you do not need a hot tub in most of the Florida markets, right? That's a very clean and easy way to understand that logically. Therefore, when you're thinking about getting a hot tub, it depends. Are you in a Florida market? Are you in like an Arizona market? Are you in a mountain market? Are you in a market where it gets really cold and people want to be able to sit out in the cold in a nice, hot, warm uh, hot tub? Then that makes a lot of sense. Are you in the middle of a city? Because if you're in the middle of a city and you don't really have a ton of space, are you really going to want to get like a hot tub? Um, it, do they have the privacy that they would want? Is it going to be on a balcony? Like it's just kind of like a, one of these scenarios where the hot tub has to fit the environment and it also has to fit the climate. And so that's mm -hmm. why, you know, I've got to ask you, where are you? Right. And, and that's why it doesn't make sense to put it absolutely anywhere. Gotcha. That makes sense. So, um, with that being said, what, what, you know, specifically about the market are you looking for to basically determine the amenities? So this is referred to as the bird. You're, you're asking, you know, what amenities should I get within that market is what you're saying that, right? Right. Okay. So it's called the Burger King logic, right? McDonald's, this is the way that I think about it anyways. So McDonald's spends millions of dollars to figure out what corner to be on and Burger King opens up across the street with the same product, right? Essentially, there are millions of Airbnbs that currently exist and there are thousands of them that are doing extremely well, Right they've essentially figured out what to do to drive a lot of revenue. And so instead of having to take the risk of saying, hey, if I put a hot tub in here, is it going to increase my revenue or not? You can simply use the data, which is just other people's listings, to see who's performing at the top and then do exactly what they're doing and provide the similar sort of um, experience and features and amenities that are allowing them to be those top performers. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. It does make sense. So, you know, understanding you know, and to summarize, it's just like understanding what works in that market already, right? Correct. Yeah. Take a look at, take a look at what's happening out there and figuring out what's working, right? And, and you figure out what's working by the people that are making the most amount of money because they are doing what's working best in that market. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, what I, I guess just, just, you know, it, there's no right, right answer here, but I'm seeing in my opinion, top three amenities that people like are talking about and you you might see it differently too it just depends on who you're talking to and what's on social media but i see a lot of people talking about ev chargers pet friendly you know oh should i switch to pet friendly to get more bookings um hot tubs is is pretty common what do you see any other like like hot topic ones that people really talk about about that they think could drive revenue and we're just talking about in general, right? Like in general, the board, yeah. There's no like we board. have some right answers and it coming up in a few yeah, that yeah, we're yeah. gonna divulge, but yeah, I, what are you hearing on the streets? <laughs> it's funny, it, it's funny because like even right now, as I'm about to answer this question, I literally want to say it depends on your market. <laughs> because, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right. yeah. Like that is the answer, right? Yeah. Um, um, but the the so if I were to say, you know, like across the board, very, very like generally. Hot tub obviously is one of those that is a, a huge revenue driver, right? But I kind of like to think about like an amenity a little bit deeper than just a hot tub, right? So like, you know, do you get a hot tub where it's like the wood barrel cover around the hot tub? And then if you do get a hot tub, do you get, do you make a little like oasis around that hot tub? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like little bar seats around it, some like maybe a neon light that's around it and kind of create like a really funny like spot for people to hang out in the evenings and have drinks, right? So there's more to it than just a hot tub, but hot tub's definitely one. Um, if we, I'm not sure if this really counts 100% as an amenity, but I consider it to be an amenity that people are ex experiencing, which is actually the design of the listing. And that goes, people don't understand how important design is. They truly do not understand. We'll get into it, but across the board, across the markets, design is one of those top ones. 
And I'm actually going to throw one out there that's probably not what you're thinking, but it's it's hanging lights and taking the right photos of those hanging lights outside to really create yeah. a, a atmosphere and photos that feel like it's, it's coming straight out of a magazine. Or um, I, got a, I got a better one for you. Or that picture of a giant, you know, that yak, that that photo of the yak that's in like, or that that cow thing that's in every single listing in Texas, oh. or like Arizona. You know what yeah, I'm yeah, talking yeah, about? Yeah. See, like, the big antlers like, all the way across. I don't across. know why that. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. That's the one. Yeah. yeah. And, and I'm just go going to throw one last as a sort of bonus. Uh, is is the fire pit right? And we can get into that as well. And I've actually had a crazy insight last night about that. We can get to, but. Yeah, uh, love to, love to hear more. I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, I'm starting to hear like, and and you're seeing on certain data platforms too, they're trying to provide more information about these certain amenities. You know, obviously pools are a big one, hot tubs, EV chargers, I'm seeing pop up, you know, as a checkbox, you can see which properties have those. those. Um, uh, I think I said hot tubs already, uh, just some like generic ones, parking, things like that. Um but in reality, though, what John's trying to say and what I would like to reiterate to you guys is that it might not necessarily be relevant to your market. It might not necessarily be important. You might, the ROI on particular amenities varies market to market. When we're looking at the data, when I'm looking at the data of a hot tub in, say, a Gulf Shores, Alabama, which is a beach market versus a hot tub in Western North Carolina, Asheville, or even the Smoky Mountains, um, we're seeing that the hot tub has less, uh, ROI than say in the Smoky Mountains, in the Smoky Mountains and, or just in the mountains, I'll say mountains in general, the ROI on a hot tub is almost a hundred percent on average. That's a lot. Yeah. Whereas in the beach markets, it, you might be lucky to get 10%, you know, a ten, which means it takes about 10 years to get your money back on that hot tub. Just looking at the data roughly. I mean, it, you know. Like I said, it's going to depend. Let's use that caveat, put that disclaimer out there. It's market dependent. And I love what you said, though, John, uh, about it's not just the amenity. It's the things around it as well. Like what type of, of amenity? And the only way you're going to get that answer is by studying. Just, sorry, I just saw Didi put in the comments. It's not a lot. It's not a yak. It's a longhorn bull. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I, saw I saw that. Oh, uh, it made me laugh. But going back to this, it's not about, oh, is it hot? Do I just get a random hot tub and put it in? But it's, it's about knowing your market and what type of hot tub or the number of guests you need to accommodate for that hot tub really fits. And yeah, that's how it's going to maximize that revenue there. So, I, John, that was beautiful. Um, and what another thing, too, that you said, sometimes like – Guys, I really want to like I you'll never understand this because you're not in our brains. But like sometimes like the other person will say something and you're like, man, I thought I was the only one who knew that or like thought that way. You yeah. know, like yeah. John said something that I haven't heard anybody else think or say besides myself and that it's amenities aren't necessarily just the check boxes you do in Airbnb or VRBO, you know, all the items in there the hanging lights, the design and decor, the, you know, landscaping, all these other things are quote unquote amenities that can yeah. impact revenue because of the looks We're visual. So think of amenities as visual items or things that you can add to a, uh, a property, not they, just the specific thing. Go ahead, John. Yeah, and I want to, I want to say that uh, another way to think about it is the experience that you're giving the guest. Right. So an amenity increases the experience that they're, they're having. So if, if it's a hot tub, they're going into the hot tub and they're enjoying the hot tub. But you got to think about that. If they're going into your living room, does your living room have a theme and feel to it that matches really well with the market that you're in? And it makes them feel either really cozy within that market or really comfortable within that market. And, and, and within the, your specific home, does it make it do they can they feel the experience of that home through your design in that living room? Right. And that's that that's a, an experience that lasts way longer than sitting in a hot tub. It's going to last the entire time that they're at that place, and they're just going to feel good. I went to one Airbnb mm -hmm. that had a, a a mural all the way across the whole living room with like these striped lines, and every time I would just kind of look up, it would just be these bright, fun colors, and it just always made me feel good just being in that room, right? And that's a part. It's the experience that you're giving them, right? The, the hot tub is part of the experience. The design is also part of the experience. So just another way to think about it. Yeah, somebody asked about, you know, some urban Philadelphia, Houston, urban markets. We're going to talk about those in a second. 
Um, but yeah, that, I mean, that's, that's what I'm, we're going to cover. We're going to cover a lot of markets here in, in, yeah. in terms of like amenity wise. Um, somebody asked for a new host, how do you select between your backyard versus cheaper markets further away? Oh, 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 oh. Um, oh back, you're not there. Not physical. Yeah, I was like, they're back. Sorry. I was really getting into the amenity. Yeah, me too. <laughs> talking about investing in your backyard versus cheaper markets further away. That is a probably another conversation about determining markets. I don't know, John, yeah. you like, completely that... different conversation. Okay. Yeah, completely different conversation. Let's stay on amenities because that's what people are here for. Reach out to me offline. Send me a message. I see you're on Facebook. Uh, just send me a message. We'll chat after this and we'll, we'll I'll take care of what you're uh, wanting to know, but I want to focus on amenities. So, okay, let's talk about guests. So we talked about it depends on the market, yeah. but one thing too, it also depends on the guests. And so, um, you know, before I hand it off to you, John, I, I was thinking about, I kind of mentioned it earlier, but the pet friendly. And when you look at the data of pet friendly, what you see in the numbers um, is that it's certain markets we'll check that box first so certain markets yep. it's better to it's only beneficial to be pet friendly if you have a smaller property so like one bedroom to like maybe three and then Ooh. after four it just drops off and it's like actually wow. so better the top properties and the better performing properties are not pet friendly at all and are actually you know like no no pets allowed and so there's just like there's zero ROI for being pet friendly with the larger market properties. And so keep in mind that that's not, that's not every single market. So like, like I said, caveat disclaimer, yep. please, everybody should know that by now and your market will vary, but it's interesting though, as kind of just an overarching trend that the lower the property or bedroom count, the higher the return for pet friendly. And it, I believe it has to do with the guest demographic and who's coming yep. to the property. Um, sure. So John, uh, yeah, take, take us away. How do you feel about guest demographic and how that varies for amenities? Okay, so I need people to understand that an Airbnb is a business, right? It's not just a home for people to stay in. You're not doing long-term rental. You're running a business, okay? And when you're running a business, step one of running a business is understanding who you're selling your product to, right? Who is the absolute best person to be selling this product to? And an Airbnb works the exact same way. There is a certain guest who is willing to pay the most amount of money to stay at your specific listing, right? And, you know, as an example, um, we're in one market, TechFester is in one market. And on one side of the city, we host uh, uh, families and bachelor, bachelor parties. Okay. That's the demographic that we search for in that area. Those are the people that are willing to pay the most in that area. And then in a different part of the city, we only focus on bachelorette groups, bachelorette specifically, large groups of women in that specific area. It's the same city. We have two completely different demographics on opposite sides of the city. So the, 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 there is a guest out there that is willing to pay the most. And we're going to kind of break it down by, you know, once again, depends on the market, depends on the location within that market. But the de the guest demographic is everything for maximizing your revenue. And can I just share one last quick little story on this before we before I hand it over, Kenny? No, so, yeah. So when I opened up my first four locations in Chicago, um, I went through the entire summer. I had a great summer. The homes were performing well. Um, and then, but what I did because I'm obsessed with the data was I took every single last review and I put, plugged them all into a spreadsheet for each of those four different listings. And then I tried to find as much information as I possibly could about each of the, the guests that had stayed with me, even to the point of searching them on Facebook, just to figure out like what kind of job they had, what they did, different things like that. Right. What I ended up figuring out was that each home had a different demographic. One was like, sort of like a, an artistic group. The other ones were like engineers. I can go into detail as to why that was, but what I ended up figuring out was that the the best, the person that paid the most, that uh, gave the best, the most five star reviews and had the least amount of complaints, were large groups of women that were coming for bachelorette parties, right? Which in my intuitively, I would have never thought was the situation because, um, you know, a bachelorette party, you think that they're going to be partying the entire time, or you think that they're going to have an issue with one thing or another. But it just turned out that they were that was the best case scenario. And then I also so, so what I did with that information, once I realized it was I changed all of my titles and all of my information for all of my properties to say bachelorette gatherings welcomed in all these listings. And the next summer was filled up almost every single weekend across every single property with bachelorette gatherings. And, uh, I made a significant amount more money year over year. And so 
that was a huge game changer. Um, just being able to understand what guest was the absolute best for that specific home, even to the point where I realized that that the reason that they were booking the, the, the first home was because of the style and design and the colors that I'd used in that home in comparison to the other ones. And so then I actually went and changed some of the other ones to better fit what the, uh, the, the ones that they wanted the most, right? And, and all the future ones that I made were designed around them as well. So anyways, that's a quick little story about a way that I used a guest demographic to be able to increase my revenue uh, across my properties. Yeah, yeah. And I have a, a similar, you know, I'm going to save it because it's very sim It's very similar to what John said. I I targeted wedding guests because uh, I, I quickly realized um, that there's like three or four wedding venues from one of my properties, like within walking distance in downtown Buffalo. Didn't, didn't know that at the time. I was like, who gets married in downtown Buffalo? Uh, and, uh, but I started getting reviews and people were like, oh, we came for a wedding and blah, blah, blah. And um, so I, I changed up my listing. I added full length mirrors in every single bedroom, like really, really nice ones, kind of like a makeup bar uh, for the bridesmaids uh, table area and took pictures like that. And um, did a few extra like, you know, like steamers in every single room and like just a bunch of like little, little things that are amenities. And I took a property from that was grossing 80,000 up to 120,000. And yeah. these people were paying a lot more wedding, wedding venue people pay a lot more um, for their events. Can I just stop you right there for a second? What is your set expenses on that property? My set expenses? Yeah, roughly, roughly. Oof. So, uh, you're, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's probably yeah. like um, roughly between forty to fifty thousand a year. Okay. So this is what this is what I love so much about this because because you figured out that you can focus in on weddings, you were already profiting what like thirty thousand dollars, thirty so? to forty thousand a year, yeah. thirty to forty thousand dollars, and then you made an additional forty thousand dollars. But the reality is is that that additional forty thousand dollars was almost all pure profit because you had right. already covered your set expenses, so everything above that was just pure profit which is why, just so everyone knows, that's why we're putting on these workshops, right? Is because it's every dollar that you can increase it is almost 100% returned back into your pocket because you've already covered your set expenses. So anyways, I just wanted to point that out and how in, how crazy that is, right? I I believe, and John, I you know, I put in your two cents here after I say this, but I believe that if you really understand your guest demographic, the true amenities that maximize your ROI come out. Oh, 100%, 100%. So yep. let me give two quick examples, right? Uh, no, sorry, you only figure out your we, your amenities based off of your guests. You figure it based off of your market, but you also figure it based off of your guest, right? An example is, it, it, it's simple and like family oriented, right? Jung should I add a jungle gym or should I not into my backyard? Well, is it family orientated or is it not? Right. That that's sort of like a very quick one. It should I put like a, a the should I put it in a game room? And if I do put it in a game room, what kind of games should I put in there? Right? Is it going to be for adults to play around and drink beer and play pool, or are we hang or is it kids that are going to be hanging out in that game room and being able to do that? That makes a direct difference into how much you're actually going to be making. Another good example of this, is, and one that I see happen more often than not, which is kind of frustrating in my opinion um is all these really unique cool uh remote uh airbnbs right whether it be like an, a, a tiny little a-frame that somebody built or a yurt or something along those lines but it only sleeps two people right mm -hmm. if it only sleeps two people it should be 100 focused around a romantic couple getaway it's not two guys that are going to be going there it's going to be a couple that's going there so make it romantic make it really quaint and cute and Make it designed for the girl because she's the one who's probably going to be picking it and, and, and wanting to stay there, right? And so you could take a, 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 a shipping container and, and make it really focused around a romantic sort of feeling for that couple. And then they're going to be willing to pay more to stay there. And you, I see it time and time again. So rather than it just being like a, a kind of a cool place, be like, no, be more focused on it. It's obviously going to be couples staying here. Let's give them the experience that they want to have. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that... Uh... The understanding, like you said, so certain bedroom counts will have particular amenities that are better than other bedroom counts. Like, right. you know, adding a, a full size pool to a two bedroom house might not have the same impact as, say, adding the same size pool to a four bedroom house. You know, I kind of right. talked about pet friendly. You know, somebody in the comments challenged me on it. They're mainly in urban markets, which makes sense. Um, 
it really just depends on, but un, like it depends on the market and understanding what works in that market and what doesn't based which, on what we're seeing in the top properties and your guest demographic as well. Correct. So, which is what you said before you talked about the pet friendly yeah. in your defense. You're like, it depends on the market, right? Right. But it, you, very true. You know, yeah. Um, so somebody says, what about if you own a condo where you have little control on outside amenities? So I so I actually was going to say that we should hold off on answering that one because we yeah, are going to answer it. And right now we're talking about guest demographics. So Enzo, we are getting to that. Yeah. So, so you, yeah, that that, yeah, yeah I know. Around. I already know where you're going. Um, yeah. So do you think that the amenities matter as much with a two bedroom condo ski property? Are that many people looking at my games and books? My condo may be look better and have better photos, but we have the same shared hot tub pool. I have great hospitality and presentation. Do you want to save that or answer that one? I want to save that one as well. I think okay. that goes along the same ideas because it's it's pretty much saying, hey, I only have the inside to work with um, and what can I do, right? Right. Is the way I'm understanding that question. Yeah, no, so, I, I, I love that. So I guess... To kind of wrap this up, though, in terms of guest demographics, every single one of you listening, what you need to do right after this call or this weekend, I hate to make you do homework on a Friday night. Um, <laughs> school's not yeah. out yet. Uh, sure. You know, it's in session. So homework. Uh, Kenny gives homework over the weekend. Go through your reviews, number one. Read what people yeah. are saying that they like about it. Glean the information. Why did they come there? Try to understand why your guests are there. See if you can highlight any nuggets from that, <laughs> excuse me, to pull out, to understand more about who your guest demographic is and how you can best target it. Never, ever buy an amenity specifically because you like that amenity. Because you, you, oh, I think that my house should have hanging lights because I like that. Now, I'm not saying that's wrong. That could be right. Most of the time it is right. But like, I, you know, like I should pick something crazy, like um, a zip line. I love a zip line. So I should add a zip line to my property because thank you, Matt. Wow, that's <laughs> crazy. You both that the I time. love zip line. So I should add a zip line to my beach property that goes from, you know, the top balcony all the way out to the ocean, because that would be awesome. And somehow I think the insurance is going to cover that. I mean, uh, oh, perfect. Thank you, Amanda. An espresso machine. That is a beautiful, relevant example. A zip line was a terrible one. So <laughs> espresso machine is a perfect example of this. How many people actually know how to work? The percentage of the population actually know how to work an espresso machine. And I will fully admit, well, one, I don't drink coffee. So that, that's probably why. I don't know how to work it. Um, and there's a lot of people who drink coffee I've talked to who don't. So in reality, unless you have some luxury property where you're attracting, you know, you're near the fields of some coffee bean farm, and that's something you need to have, does an espresso make, machine make sense and going to move the dial? John, what do you think? I, most likely not. I mean, it's, right. it's one of those things where, no, the, the answer is no. The answer is right. a straight up no. An espresso machine is not going to do it unless you have an extreme coffee bar uh, in an area like Washington like Seattle, Washington, where people love their coffee, right? Once again, yeah. market, guest, guest demographic, and then you apply the amenity. That's the way that you got to think about it. Yeah, Rachel said like 5%. I, I, yeah, I'd probably say so, or less. Um, I, would, I, yeah, I, don't I, think I think a Keurig, prob, uh, an espresso is like a Keurig. Okay, I'm learning stuff here. People are teaching me. <laughs> yeah, <right? laughs> so, yeah. Um, so could, before before we hop on, Kenny, could you actually talk a little bit about the income and when it comes to guest demographic? Yes. So what I wanted to highlight there, I'm glad you said that actually, because that was like the first one and we didn't touch on it. So yeah. what I wanted to highlight there, especially with EV chargers, because I've had a lot of people ask me about EV chargers and um, the data is pretty positive and supportive. However, I would never add an EV charger to any of my properties, even though it might be beneficial. Um, the reason why is because of the guest demographic. My, the guests that come to my properties, now I don't have like some redneck properties. Um, no offense to the rednecks out there, but like, yeah. I don't, you know, I, 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 they're, they're nice properties, but are they luxury? Are they the type of properties that when that my guests drive electric vehicles? Probably not. No, I, I actually know they don't drive electric vehicles. I can check my cameras. 
I stopped by the airport. I've met my guests. Some of them drive Escalades. That's great. That's fine. But a lot of my guests do not drive Teslas. That's just not their demographic. They're drive. They might be driving from long to you know if it's a drive-in destination, that could be one thing. Um, but a lot of them don't. So why would I invest fifteen hundred dollars in getting an EV charger and trying to figure all that out, especially on some of my properties? It's probably gonna be a lot more than fifteen hundred dollars in terms of like setting it up and everything. Um, if my guests don't even drive electric vehicles. So when I say income, think of the demo, don't necessarily think of how much money the guest makes, but think of the demographic. I mean, even um, the same thing for there's certain markets. I mean, like uh, I'm not picking on hot springs here. Hot springs, Arkansas is a great market. It's a redneck Riviera. I mean, people say that all the time. EV chargers probably not going to be big out there in terms of like a lot of your guests, you know, going there, it's going to be mainly couples or they're there to experience the outside, the, the lake the, that to that kind of effect. But if you have the, the biggest, the hot, like the most luxury property in that area and it, and that's your, that's your style, your guests probably will drive electric vehicles and that EV charger will definitely be worth it. So think about really understand the income demographic as well of your guests, because that will also help you decide which amenities you should add. Yeah, I think we gave a, a ton of great logical examples that people can use when they're thinking about their markets. You just got to apply logic to who is this person that's going to be staying here? What is it that they want? What is it that they do? And how can I give it to them to enhance their experience? And if you could do that, what it's going to allow you to do and why this is important is that people are going to book your home over somebody else's home. That's what we're doing. We're, you're in competition. If there's a thousand listings out there, there's a thousand other places that people can stay. Therefore, you've got to do things that allow you to stay above everybody else. And if you know how to cater the best possible experience to the exact guest that is willing to pay the most amount of money, then you are going to get those bookings and that's why you're going to make more money, right? And that's what we're trying to teach you and trying to explain to you. Just apply the logic to your market. Yeah, and I think um, it might be uh, beneficial in the future where we, most of us have to have EV chargers, just not right now, in my opinion. I know someone was talking about there's rebates for them and everything. Really what what we're getting at though, especially with this is I've, I've met some people who are like, well, I have a garage on my house, my air, the, my new Airbnb, it has a garage and I can put an EV charger in there or I can turn it into a game room, which is going to have a greater, greater ROI. Game room. And I mean, it, all yeah. The game room. Right. So like, yeah. That, that, you know, or whatever you turn the garage into something else. So like, that's the real like question and understanding how to determine that. Um, okay. Let's, let's actually go into, let's see for Florida for two for family demographics. What's the maximum distance they should be away from the beach before I start losing money on the property due to distance of the beach. I actually Whoa. got a good answer to this. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like, we'll have the calculator here. Like, <laughs> Uh, go ahead, John. <laughs> Take yeah, your own. <laughs> so this is this isn't like a isn't foolproof, but it's one of these things that's sort of tested from uh, reviewing a lot of different a lot of different markets. It, it, it applies. I'll give two examples. So it's kind of called like the half an hour rule. Um, if you're half an hour away, you're kind of too far. That just feels you know you have to drive a half an hour to be able to get to the beach. If you have to drive 25 minutes or 20 minutes, it doesn't feel as long as a half an hour does. That's it just, the reality is it's that it doesn't, right? And we also have seen that um, with homes that are about 20 minutes away, it's sort of like a max. So it's a, I guess we call it a 20 minute rule, not 30 minute rule. 20 minutes away from the destination that people want to be at, that's about the maximum distance that at least at TechFester, TechFester, we're willing to go, right? We don't want to go any any further than, than, than 20 minutes. So um, when it comes to a beach, that's the idea. When it comes to, you know, Blue Ridge, as an example, small little town, quaint little place, um, people aren't going specifically for the town, but they want to be within driving distance to be able to go to like nice restaurants and a 20 minute drive is not that bad. A half an hour drive is in my, in our opinion. And so 20 minutes is sort of the answer to that. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> excuse me. Let's talk about beach markets. All right. So generally in beach market, <laughs> Because I I, uh, I even put a little disclaimer there on the little fire pit. And uh, honestly, guys, like I said, if you're in a condo, we're, let's talk about condos, um, I guess, here. Because most mar beach markets have condos. They are in mountain and other markets as well, but pr prevalently in beach. So, so John, we've always got pools. 
golf related. Tell us about golf related. I mean, pools is a big one. That that's probably like if you can get a pool and a beach market, you you definitely should, right? Like that's yep, like 100%. The, I mean, looking at the data guys in most markets, depending on the bed count, that's important too, the bedroom count. I mean, you're talking like an additional 20 to up to $40,000 more by just adding the swimming pool. So, yep. you know, and then John, you even talked about it on your reel. Uh, your reel. So guys, if you, if you don't follow John and I on Instagram, follow us on Instagram. We put out some really good content and we talk about some of the stuff on there too. It's just in less than 60 seconds. So <laughs> um, but John, you talked about what was that amenity that you got to add to pools? Oh yes. Pool heaters. Yes. The most elusive amenity there is out of all the, the all, everything, right? So um, I'll just get, I'll jump right into it. So you need to have a pool. But for that pool to be useful, you need to have a pool heater, okay? The reality is, is that the pool is, is only useful when it's actually warm and people can go into it and enjoy it, right? As soon as it starts to be cold, you become cold, it is no longer useful. The other thing is that almost everybody has a pool heater. And if your place does not have a pool heater, you are going to be the last on the list of, what, of the places that they are going to book. I am crazy about this. And the reason being is because I actually got two places in Scottsdale that did not have a pool heater and I did not cash flow on those properties. So I actually lost money on them. And I know for a fact it was because of the pool heater because everybody complained about it and it was really difficult to get booked. Whereas everybody else was starting to get booked a lot sooner than me and they all had pool heaters. And that's why I'm actually kind of obsessed with the, the data and so crazy about it is because I missed such a tiny little thing in my, in my head. It was such a tiny little thing. But uh, if you really analyze the market properly, you'll understand that the, that pool heater is absolutely everything. At TechFester, we, if we find a place that doesn't have a pool heater, we automatically put a pool heater in there. It's like a $10,000 uh, expense, $10,000, $12,000, worth every single last penny, makes your pool actually usable for a significantly longer time. And yes, it increases the, the, uh, the energy bill, but it is 100% worth it to have it in there, okay? So pool heater, very, very, very important. Um, Matt, we'll answer your question in a second. Uh, but John talk about golf related. So what does that mean? Yeah. So this is actually going back to guest demographics, right? Um, most beach markets do have golf nearby, right? Because most beach markets are warmer markets. And so it allows for the people that live in the North to come down to the South and play some golf over the winter. Right. And so most of these markets always tend to have a, a golf course or a handful of golf, golf courses, not too far away. Therefore, your guests are likely going to be wanting to go golfing, whether it be just the dad or it is a, a golf trip. If you have something golf related within that uh, uh, home, it is going to make them want to book your home more. And the simplest thing that you could possibly that you could do is just adding a little putting green into the, your backyard. You can put a really simple one that's just a straight line and it kind of sits on top of the grass. That's like the super cheap one. Or you can get like a whole built out uh, mini putt that goes in there. You can get the the. Uh, multiple different holes that people can play, right? And then the last thing you could potentially do as well is also get a golf simulator. All of these things are just going to be making people who want to play golf, that are going down there to play golf, during the slower season, want to book your home in comparison to everybody else, right? So something golf related is, is going to pull in the type of guests that you want to, you want to have during that time period. I like that. Um, we'll get into the design one in the urban side, but um, for people with condos, especially in beach markets, if you can, if you have the space to, to have this stuff, that's a one question, but, um, if you can provide kayaks, paddle boards, beach supplies. So like the, the little wagons, the sand castle stuff for families, um, towels, that's a big one. That's a really, really big one that I don't see in some beach properties, believe it or not. Um, anything, any of those little things that can kind of set you apart, from everybody else in the building in beach markets. That's probably one of the, um, the biggest things I see, uh, is you've got a lot of competition because everybody else, like even the houses too, the houses are pretty similar. They're not, and it's, it's purely just locational, you know, even on the beach, there's like a bunch of houses lined up right there and you're competing side by side by side. So it's the little things. Um, Matt asked about the Tiki bar. Okay. I, I have no idea, you know, like it depends, but here's the thing though. What do you think visually, I guess when they're looking through your listing, they're going to see if you have a tiki bar and you've got like the margarita, like some guy or woman holding up a margarita, like the family's there, everyone's having a good time versus like some chairs and a pool. You know what yeah. I mean? Like there's yeah. obviously an appeal and that tiki bar can have an ROI, but if it's just 
a regular tiki bar, is that going to drive revenue? John, what do you think? I mean, this goes back to what I was talking about with the hot tubs, where you need to be able to actually um, make it into a really nice, enjoyable setting and then take great photos of it, right? If you put up a hot tub, don't just put up a hot tub, put a hot tub with a bar around it, with greenery behind it, with neon lights, with the hanging lights above it, and really make it this experience that people are going to enjoy and then take beautiful photos of it. So yeah. exactly what you're saying, right? You, you could throw a tiki bar back there and take a photo of it. Great. Maybe that's going to do something, but you've got to make it look beautiful. Like it just came out of a magazine and that's really going to drive that revenue for that. Now, this presentation is all about the top three amenities, right? And a tiki bar wouldn't necessarily be the top three, um, but, but, but it's in there. It's amenity. It's something that you could do. Right. And it's, yep. and especially if you have a tiny backyard, it's definitely an option as well. Yeah. And, and uh, we put four and the reason why is because uh and I did this for the other ones too, because some of these, it might not uh, apply. So like, for example, um, Orange Beach, I think Alabama, they have like Engulf Shores. They have a rule like uh, you can't have any fire pits, you know, no fires whatsoever. Uh, I'm not sure why it's all sand, but maybe to preserve the, the I don't know, but um, you, you just, you can't do it. So, and if you might not be able to, you know, golf related stuff, or if you're in a condo, you might not be able to go get kayaks, like fit your kayaks in there. Um, or you might not be able to get a private pool or get a pool heater or whatever the stuff is. Want to just provide you guys with more than just three as an added bonus to help you guys out in case you already have something or, or whatever. Um, yeah. Okay. For the pool heater, do you charge extra? Okay. That's, um, I mean, John, do you know what that's, Tech Buster does or? No, I don't. Know? I really don't. That's not so, my area. I, I have a good friend. I don't have any beach properties, but I have a good friend who does. And, um, they will either um, he's tried to bake it into the price of the home. It can get costly. So they'll, they'll just say like a set fee. Um, and usually, so what they'll, so some people will charge, I've done it before. I've seen it before. Some people will charge, okay, well, how many nights do you want to do it? And it's a, you know, extra 20 bucks a night or 75 or something like that, depending on the cost. I know, I know gas costs are high there with a pull heater. Um, so it's really important to, um, just kind of figure something out. I would say ch charge a fee, like a flat fee, just so it's very clear and upfront. Hey, if you want to use this in the winter time, it does cost a little extra. Most people know that. And so you just kind of give them a, a full uh, fee. So um, anyway. Um, can I, so I'm going to actually jump in and answer two questions real quick. And then we, go ahead. we're at 47 minutes already. So we want to hop to these next markets fairly quick. Yeah. Um, so Erica asked, uh, do we ever add a pickleball court to any of our properties? I pushed to add a pickleball court to every single one of our properties for the past eight months or so. And the reason <laughs> being is because my parents are 65 and they love pickleball. So to me in my head that what that tells me is that the entry level to enjoy that game is very, very low. And so then if anybody goes there, they can kind of pick it up and sort of play it and enjoy it. Then Techvester just had a, an outing where we went to Miami and there was a pickleball court in the backyard. We played pickleball for three days straight across all, all the different team members. We got extremely competitive, everything. As we left, we said, we're adding a pickleball court to every single one of the Airbnbs that we can moving forward because it's so enjoyable. Almost everybody can do it. Whereas like tennis, if you think about tennis, it's a, there's a learning curve to it, right? It's going to take you a day, two, three days to really, really start enjoying yourself even basketball, most other sports. <laughs> Thanks right? for longer than that with tennis. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm still well, throwing my racket around. <laughs> <laughs> well, so pick ball. you can pick up in seconds. You, you can pick yeah. up like within like an hour and you're, you're doing better. So anyways, yes, we, we are adding pickleball, pickleball courts to our, our places. Um, and then Terry asked about, you know, hey, you have this, this awesome hot tub with the lights and the bar and all this stuff. Um, are you selling it just through the pictures or through the reviews too? And, and the answer is yes to both. You start off with the the pictures. That's how you get people to book your home, to be able to pay a really nice premium to stay at your home because you have such a nice place with great photos. Um, and then you get amazing reviews about how great the place is. And somebody who needs to confirm that the, the home is going to be a good place will check the reviews, see that the hot tub's awesome, and go from there. So, yeah. Cool. Let's talk about mountain markets. Okay. Yeah. Obviously, we're, we'll, we'll kind of fly through these uh, a yeah. little bit. Hot tub's obvious. Game room, I think a lot of people understand like arcade machines, pool tables, you know, yes. ping pong, stuff like that. Um, check your market out, check your competitors to know which things you should add. I think that's probably the biggest thing um, if you have a question about that. We talked about the EV charge already, but nicer fire pit. John, I mean, we originally just talked about f having a fire pit, which is important. And I think, it, but what does a nicer fire pit mean to you? 
Nicer fire pit. So if, if you have a, you can have a fire pit in your backyard by taking some plastic chairs and throwing a metal tin in the middle and calling it a fire pit, taking a photo, people like, Oh, look, there's a fire pit, right? Then you can go to the next level where you actually um, put stones all around in a big circle in a certain part of the backyard. You add either like gravel or something on the ground to kind of cover it all up. Then you add nice wood chairs that go all the way around and they could be either like the chairs that are really in style or the Adirondack chairs. I hate saying that word. Um, Adirondack chairs. And, and they look really good, cozy, and they go in a nice big circle. And then you have hanging lights all the way around um, with posts and hanging those lights around. And it's it maybe even a path from the back of the house all that leads all the way up to that fire pit. That is a significant difference between some plastic chairs around a tin piece of metal, right? And so... It, it and mind you, everything I just explained to you is an expensive fire pit. However, it looks amazing and there is a return, but only in specific markets, obviously, as we've talked about before. Now, does every mountain market need something that extreme? Not necessarily, but uh, that would be the difference between a high end fire pit and in just a not high end fire pit, I guess. Yeah, um, I do um, want to. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, I, I was just saying, no, I just saying the EV charge is based on the data and the mountain market's pretty strong. So that's why we threw EV charger in here. Um, something to definitely consider. Remember the guest demographic side as well. Yeah. I want to just mention something about the game room. If you can go back for a second. Um, so a couple things on this one it, to have a game room, you have to have space for a game room, right? Yep. So uh, when you're actually, which is, you know, something that you and I do, for everybody is helping them find profitable properties to ensure that they can maximize their revenue. And, you know, some people don't, you know, they obviously understand this logically, but we're ensuring that this happens, right? So if you're getting a home and it has only one living room and there's no space to add any of these games in, into the home, then you're not going to be able to compete with these people. And that's a very obvious one, but it can be very easily missed, right? And so if you are trying to compete within this market, you have to realize that you need that game room, which means you need that second living room, which means you can then fill it with all those games. And then this is really where it comes back to the guest demographic. Is it for is it for kids or is it for adults, right? And that's really going to change the make a huge difference as to what games you're actually throwing into uh, that game room. So, anyways, just wanted to point talk a little bit more about a game room. Um, some of the best game rooms for kids in the entire world are in Kiss Me. If you want some really great ideas, yep, love it. And just keep in mind, guys, remember the ROI for each of these amenities will vary market to market. So a game room in the mountains is going to be different ROI, higher ROI than, say, a game room on the beach market or maybe, Mount, uh, Matt, where you're asking your market, especially Zion. People aren't there to play games. They're there to go see Zion. So the ROI is definitely going to be different. Um, it, it, we, yeah, I, I would agree. There is that, that sort of if you have the ability to put. Uh, so for Matt's situation here, he's got he's gonna have one big room, from my understanding, and he's also gonna have space within that room to add a pool table, which makes to me a ton of logical sense because it, it it's a game that you know a lot of people can play for a long period of time, and uh, um, it's more of a market that's more so focused on on I wouldn't say necessarily just kids, but uh, it's not necessarily just focused on kids. It's focused on like adults and going hiking and all this different stuff, and and a pool table makes more sense than a foosball table. Anyways, you get sure. the idea. Yeah. <laughs> Going too deep into this. Um, let's talk about urban markets and John, go ahead. So we've got, um, man, I wish we had a lot more time to cover all this stuff. I know. Uh, right? Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a second. Um, design and core. This is going to answer some of the questions earlier, John, I'm going to let yeah. you take this away. Let's give you yep. three minutes to do it. Go. Okay. All right. So, so, I am, I'm, uh, when it comes to design, it's everything. And, and it's, it's one of these things that um, people just make the mistake on over and over and over again. They don't realize how big of a deal the design is to actually increasing the amount of revenue that you're going to make within a listing. And specifically when you're in a market where, or when you're in a building that does not have a backyard where you don't have any other competitive advantage other than your interior, that's where the design is, is, is everything, right? So you have to, um, figure out what is the type of design that is going to be the best for my clients within that are staying in this area. Then I tell everybody, hire a designer, hire designers, hire somebody who actually knows what they're doing. Don't just think that you have the, the, the skills to do it. Find somebody who can really create a immersive design experience. And that could be a boho theme that is just over the top, really well put together, or it can be an industrial theme that is really well done over the top, put together. 
the way that I want you to think about this is that you're creating an immersive experience with your design. Now I'm going to bring up Disney with, to explain this because it's the best way to explain this. When you go to Disney and you go to, let's say Toy Story Land and you're walking through the rides or through the entire part of that park, it's very, very immersive. Everywhere you look, there's life-size Toy Story things going on all over the place. So you're, you're, you feel like you're in the movie, right? No matter where you look, if you, if you're just in it, right? And especially while you're waiting in line, it's even more so that you feel like you're immersed inside this design. And that's this sort of logic and way you need to be thinking about it when it comes to designing your home inside a smaller unit. You're creating so much, such an immersive experience into whatever design you have chosen that is best for that market and going all out with it so that no matter where that person looks, they are feeling it through and through, okay? Um, I, th I don't think that was three minutes, but like I think that gets the the hits a nail on the head. Like you, you have to create that immersive design experience to be able to stand out from everybody else, take amazing, amazing photos on it, and you will see an increase in your bookings. Don't just throw a couch in there that's colorful and think that you've done your job. Create that immersive experience if you really want to have uh, an increase in your revenue for such a tiny little space. Is talk, that a, yep, that's fine. Talk, talk about outdoor space. What does that mean? Outdoor space. Are you saying? Are you saying like outdoor space as in like a patio area, or are you talking about I mean, like? Yeah. Okay. So say you're in a condo and you have an, a tiny little outdoor space. So what I would do. It, it's the same idea. You're maximizing that entire space. You're not just adding a couple of chairs out there and calling it a day, right? You are adding, I would add turf right to the bottom. I would add some hanging lights above there. I would add um, some sort of, you know, comfortable chair setup. Let me ex express that comfortable, something where people can actually sit down and hang out on that actual space. Maybe some fake plants so that it, it kind of brings out a nice little feeling out there. Maybe a neon light out there. Um, something along those lines, just to create a really cool experience. If you have your neighbors right to the left, put up a, a, like a greenery wall that kind of hides you from one side to the other so people can feel like they have that sort of privacy out there, but create it into a space that one, photographs really well. It really, you know, the guests don't have to spend all the time out there on the, on the patio, uh, but you want it to look so good that they, they want to go and hang out out there, right? They're, very, they're probably gonna use it for a minimal time, but it looks so unique and so different in comparison to everybody else that it makes people want to actually go and hang out there and want to book your home because it's giving them something that nobody else has, right? So those are just, it's how you need to be thinking about these smaller spaces is you have to go over the top. And the thing is, is that if you look at the data, if you review the other people who are doing it, you will see that they are getting a huge increase in their, uh, in their revenue in comparison to everybody else, okay? So it's not just about being pretty and looking cool and having an enjoyable thing. It's actually about making more money at the end of the day, which is what Kenny and I are here to do. Yep. Um, lastly, heads and beds. Okay. Um, obviously. So this is one of the ones where uh, it has in urban markets. I mean, it, the data says like more heads and beds, right, John? Yes. Uh, yeah. Especially in urban markets. Yeah. So trying to get your guest accommodates number a lot higher um, is really important in urban markets. It has more of an impact than, say, uh, beach markets, even or in mountain markets. And that's not to say, like, oh, you should try to, you know, like, there's no impact to having heads and beds in those other markets. It's just greater in urban markets by a significant amount. So something to consider. Um, one thing, too, that's been popping up, if you can get fast Wi-Fi, a lot of people are coming to urban markets and working, you know? Um, I get I get it all the time. And I advertise that in my urban properties. Hey, fast Wi-Fi over 200 megabytes, because that's a speed. Uh, you'll get fast Wi-Fi checkbox or whatever in Airbnb if it's over 200 megabytes. So um, you might have that already. And that's great. But uh, that's something you want to make sure you advertise as well. John, any parting thoughts yeah. for urban markets? Yeah. So I, I realized I went on a little tangent about the outdoor space, but I, I didn't cover what I wanted to cover. Um, if you are, yeah, you know, I'm thinking about somebody who already has a listing and they're trying to figure out how do I maximize what I already have. Right. But if you are going to get a place in, 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 um, an urban market and you haven't gotten it yet, pay attention to the top performers and see what kind of outdoor space they have before you actually go and get a location. Okay. Because what you might end up finding is that they, they all have balconies or maybe they have like a, a nice patio, or maybe they all have little backyards, right? Inside this urban location. But then the place that you go and look for doesn't have that, right? There's no balcony. That's going to make a difference on your revenue and it matters. So just keep an eye out for that amenity, which is just an outdoor space in a, in a, in a city, right? So, which can be rare sometimes. I mean, I had a whole bunch of places in Chicago and I refused to get a spot that didn't have that. So just keep that in mind when you're trying to uh, uh, think about this, okay?
Okay. Anyways, yeah, there you go. Are we good on urban markets? We're good on urban markets. Yep, we did it. Okay, guys. Let's wrap up here. We're going to share with you how you can maximize revenue in other ways. So amenities are great, but they also cost money. So there are other strategies that we would love to share with you guys that cover how to maximize your revenue. It's not just about buying something and putting in your rental and then you make more money. There are some there are other keys here uh, that we want to cover with you guys. Um, <clears throat> so John, I mean, if you want to quickly run through the seven here, like just highlight each one and- Yeah, we'll, uh, for sure. So obviously we just went through number one, which is amenities. Uh, one thing that we didn't really touch too much on is about how to go about this. Like what's the steps in the process to be able to figure this out for your market? So that's another way that you can kind of figure out how to maximize revenue, how to, how to know how we know what we know, if that made any sense. Yeah. Um, and then also the, the next one being the, the highest and best use design. Obviously you heard me rant about design again. It's once again, how do you figure that out? Right. When you're going through it. Um, the next one is the photo shoot, the photo shoot. This is, this is, I think the photo shoot might be the greatest return on investment in comparison to almost anything else you could possibly do. Um, if you're paying 5,000 to $2,000 for a photo shoot, you're going to be getting the return from that better than almost anything across the board. I used to be in television broadcasting and, uh, I know a lot about when it comes to actually taking great photos and how to create a good experience through the photos and how to use psychology within your photos to also make guests fall in love with your location over somebody else's. And so when it comes to photos, there's so much to it that people don't understand. And, uh, there's, there, that's one of the best ways you can, uh, maximize your revenue. Uncomplicating pricing is something that you can actually do to, tonight that is going to allow you, well, not tonight, but, um, it's something that you could be doing that could increase your revenue, uh, right away because people suck at pricing their listings. Like a lot of people don't know what they're doing when it comes to pricing their listings. They're not using a lot of strategy behind it. And so Kenny and I have, have strategies behind how we actually price those listings and the ways to be thinking about it. Um, you know, you have to realize that your listing is, is, uh, it's going up against all these other listings that are side by side. And if you have the wrong price, you're never going to be able to compete. And I can, I can go into a lot of detail on that. Um, you know, ratings, ranking and reviews, the triple R, um, making sure that you're actually ranking on that first page or figuring out how to get to the first page and how important that is to be on that first page and how the, uh, ratings and reviews are actually making an effect on that. And then the one that we're, you know, slashing money, wasted money, um, probably saved money is as good as earned money. Right. And so if you can figure out ways that you can actually save money on, on your expenses, whether it be through your insurance, um, through your cleaners, through whatever it may be, uh, there's tons of ways that you can, you can just save money that way, which earns you more money. And then getting it right from the start, which is what Kenny and I do absolutely best, is making sure that before you ever buy that property, before you ever actually sign the lease or, or, or buy the home, that you, that home is truly going to be maximizing the amount of revenue for you more than anything else in the world. So those are the seven different ways that you can maximize your revenue. Um, where do you want to go from here, Kenny? Yeah. So I just want to say, guys, we talked about one and we didn't even get to get into examples and show you how we determine that for markets. We kind of told you about it. But ultimately, we want to show you more and get into more detail. And we want to share with you the other six strategies as well and share the examples and how to do this. We want to actually show you like the photo shoot requirements and what that needs to look like and how you're going to do it. We want to give you the pricing strategies. We want to show you the data behind the ratings and reviews and which one you should focus on to boost your rankings. Um, and then how do you cut expenses? You know, think, there's a rising cost all over the place. How do you cut expenses in this day and age? We want to do this. So what we're going to do, yes, this will be recorded, everyone watching. We're doing an event. John and I are doing an event on June 17th, one day event where we're going to cover each of those seven strategies and break them down into easeable, easy bite-sized chunks that you can understand and then replicate because that's the key. You need to replicate it. So personally myself, so I have, most of you know, watching, I have properties in New York, um, been doing this since 2018. I have noticed a decline or um, I have to put an effort in to get bookings now. <laughs> okay. Uh, you, you may or may not have to do that yourself, but it, it, I've noticed that most of us have to now. Some of us are even losing money. We have to market, we have to do certain things. And so it, it takes, what, what, what am I doing? And what's John seeing? What are we seeing in the data across the entire country of people who are successful and what they're doing? We want to share that with you with this, with this one day event 
um, where we're going to go over each of those seven strategies. Yeah. And I just want to mention really quickly that it's a lot of the how to. So, yep. you know, today we talked a lot about the end results. So like, what's the best for the urban markets? What's the best for the cabin markets? But how do we get that answer, right? How do we get that answer when it comes to amenities? How do we get that answer when it comes to photo shoots? How does it get that answer when it comes to pricing? All these different things, Kenny and I have a lot of strategies behind that we have proven results from. And so we're putting on this event to help you understand how to maximize your revenue. And the reason we're putting this on, and I kind of alluded to it a little bit earlier, um, you mentioned how Kenny, you were able to make $40,000 more based off of just focusing on weddings alone. And almost all $40,000 of that was pure profit, right? And so if we, we want to teach you how to just increase your revenue slightly more than what you're currently making, because it's almost all profit. So by increasing your revenue, just by a little bit, you increase your revenue, your profits significantly. And so we're putting through, putting together all seven of these. And I mean, we already had a, a, an hour in five minutes just on one topic. So imagine <laughs> trying to get through all seven in the one day. It's going to yeah. be, uh, it's going to be some work, but yeah, we're going to get it done. We're, we've got it. We've already started working on it guys. So we put the link below. It's, it's going to happen on June 17th. It starts at 10 AM. Um, we're going to take an hour break so you can rest your mind. We also have a guest speaker coming in an expert in design and decor who's going to share um, but, uh, uh, so let me break it down for you guys. So here's what we'll, you know, we obviously talked about the seven strategies, but it's going to be an eight hour day. All right. We're going to cover the seven things. We're going to show you it's the how to, so any templates, examples used, you guys are going to get it. We want you to be able to replicate it and, um, essentially maximize your revenue this year. Don't wait till after the, the peak season. We're in the peak season right now for summer. Most of us are at least. Don't wait till after when you're in the shoulder season. You're like, well, I'm not getting any bookings right now. Why is that? Now I need to talk to Kenny and John about that. It's too late. Start today, learn today, apply the strategies now because people are booking for that shoulder and winter season today. So you, we need to all do this and apply these strategies. And the cool thing about this too is, um, I don't even know, it's like one of the bonuses here, but bonus two, we're going to give you, if you decide to come to the event and immediately when you register, you get a free guide out the gate that you can start applying for your pricing strategy today. A walkthrough guide and an example of how I personally apply one, this is just one strategy that I'm going to teach you to make a thousand extra dollars a month that I'm doing. And it's super easy and you can start it today and make the money and honestly like probably get your ticket back and more in just one uh one little you know just by applying the strategy right out the door um yeah so i mean john do you want to talk about anything else that they get that that you want to highlight here the i mean the photo shoot guide is very important as well um one thing i do want to mention is that we're going to be limiting it to 150 people and the reason being is just because like how we did on this call we we're answering a lot of questions we want to be able to do that as well throughout the event because we find it to be very useful for the learning curve for, for people because we go into so much detail that sometimes they need a, a further explanation. And so we, we limit to 150 so that we can handle the amount of questions that will be coming through. Yep, love it. So guys, if you're interested, we just wanna show you this. So we're gonna pack a lot of stuff and give you a lot of stuff so you can apply it. Um, but the normal ticket price we're doing, if you wait, is 497. We're doing an early bird that ends next week. If you're interested, it's 397. So it's only 397 bucks, super affordable. And it's gonna, I guarantee you, well, I, I don't know if I can say I guarantee you, but like yeah, I, yeah. I, I feel strongly about it though. Like I really do. Like if Very. you apply one of the strategies we're gonna teach you, you'll maximize your revenue and, and 10X whatever you paid for the ticket. So whether you wait or not, like yeah. you're gonna get it. So don't wait around for this. Like don't, you know, like don't sit on your hands and go, ah, oh, maybe I gotta think about it or, you know, whatever. Like set the time aside, decide today, um, be there. Yeah. I don't know. I don't want to be like too like strong, but I I, I just well, don't want to get you know. I don't want to hear about people complaining in, in the fall. I'll be like, well, we tried. Uh, yeah, I don't know. yeah. <laughs> well, and I also want to mention too about the whole idea of like not waiting on this. Um, we sold out the last event, and yeah, we are, we're expecting this event to be sold out as well, right? So the reality is, is that this ticket might not be available within the by the end of the week, and so um, you know, if you are considering doing this, if you find this to be valuable, if this is something that you want to be a part of. Uh, you know, buy the ticket now because you're going to make, I mean, you're, it's going to be worth it. Like this, Kenny, when Kenny and I were putting on this event or when we were deciding to put on this event, 
I genuinely got really giddy and excited about this topic because this is the one thing that I'm always trying to explain to people more than anything, right? Like I've said many, many times, Kenny and I are great at finding a really good property for you to purchase. That's what we do, right? However, the next step to that is maximizing the revenue of that property. And that's something that I don't get to share as often. And so I'm getting really excited about being able to share all these informations, all these details. And we're putting, you know, we're putting together the entire event to be able to do that. Um, and, you know, if you found that the last hour was any bit beneficial, imagine eight hours of this on different strategies across every different avenue uh, of your Airbnb business. So, yeah, I mean, don't wait on this. You will be tired afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, there's no, yeah. But you'll learn so much um, and you'll be able to, you know, get that information and apply it and, and start going. Uh, yeah, just start going every day. We're not, yeah, somebody said, wow, that's cheap. I know Coach is charging $20,000 for info. Um, you know, that that's a great point, Matt. I mean, honestly, like, I don't know any coaches ha that have some of the information that we're going to share because we have access to so much data. Remember, we're data focused. And we, yeah. if you kind of connect with that, like you're, you, you like knowing about the data and the numbers and like kind of the how-to stuff, you're going to really connect with us in our teaching style because that's what we like to share. We don't like to... I don't like to say we're coaches, but more of like consultants because we have the experience and we can share with you what works and how that works in, in the different markets and, and walk you through all that rather than just teach high level principles that you have to go and figure out on your own. So um, would love to uh, do that. I'm going to post the link of this in the comments so that you guys can can check out the site uh, so that you, know, you can sign up. I, I know I've got it on the screen here, but if you don't see it, it's going to be here for, I think, some of the Facebook uh, people who don't see it. But um, anyway, so guys, check out the link. Are there any final questions for us? If you have questions about amenities as well, shh, go ahead and put them in. Ask us. But we, we can talk about that as well. We don't talk about the event. If you have questions about the event, ask us about the event. Somebody did ask, going back to the amenities, somebody's asking about saunas. Yeah. Um, go but, ahead, John. I, well, actually, I, I have want an to ask opinion you. I'll share, but you, you go ahead. No, I, I, so I'm actually going to push it back to you because okay. <laughs> I, um, I can say what I want to say on this, but have I, do you, do you find that saunas actually drive revenue? Because I don't think they do. No, there, there's two reasons why I don't like saunas. Number one, I can't find any data that supports they drive revenue. Okay. And you can't really make them like super unique. Um, maybe, maybe I haven't seen any that are super unique and that's just me, but like, I just, I haven't seen any data to really like. Be like, oh yeah, get a sauna here in really any market. And then the second reason why is they are a liability insurance wise. Um, people die in them, believe it or not. And so like, that's not really something you want going on at your property. So I know a lot of experienced investors, if they see a sauna, they tear it out and put in something else simply because of the liability. So that's something you want to check with your insurer carrier as well. Um, and it might cost you just to have the sauna in there. And we're also not seeing the data there. So really just not super bullish on saunas, in my opinion. And and I also want to mention that. Um, yes, golf simulator. That would be way yeah. cooler than the sauna. <laughs> in my yeah. opinion, so. I, I also want to mention about the saunas, right? You, people put saunas and hot tubs in the exact same category. But think about what you're actually doing in a sauna compared to a hot tub, right? Like in a sauna, you're sitting in there sweating your ass off and you're just like you you're you're half naked you're and it's it's kind of an awkward setting depending on how small it is whereas with a hot tub you're generally sitting there you got the jets going you have a drink going there's five or six of you there's lights going you have music going you're all having a good time it's not the same thing right i however you know with that all being said i think a barrel sauna makes sense in certain mountain markets or mm. unique listings i right? can see that yeah, yeah. um Maybe. Somebody asked about the cold plunge in warmer markets, Bob. I would actually say cold plunges work everywhere, um, because you know if you're in if you're in a cold market, you should still be doing cold plunges. Um, yeah. I know I take a cold shower every morning, and so like, and I live in the cold. And regardless, it's it's something that I do. But what I would also say is that it depends on the market, and it depends on the um, market, or sorry, the demographic of the type of listing that you're putting together. So I know a lot of people that put together sort of these like. Um, health retreat resorts almost like they're, they're, they tend to be cabins that are very secluded in the woods and they'll add the sauna the cold plunge the hot tub they'll put all those things into the listing and they make it sort of this holistic 
experience, which it mm. all comes back to creating that experience for somebody, right? So I wouldn't say it's like a one-off thing that you would just throw into a Florida home, um, but you would you would make it work within whichever location that you're going into. And remember, yeah. you only have so much money to spend, right? You're not you're not spending two hundred thousand dollars in all these amenities across the board. You gotta you gotta pick the ones that are the best investment, and so you want to make it uh, holistic to whatever demographic you're you're looking after. Yeah, and I think too with the marketing side, you gotta highlight it. You know, you gotta you gotta be able to push it out there and market it to people because that's really what drives the revenue. People have to see it and know that yeah. you're trying to attract them to it uh, in yeah. order to get it. Or and actually, just throw. One last little thing out here that I just thought of that was is super helpful, I think, for anybody. And it's a, it's just a tiny little thing. If you have a hot tub that has any sort of view, whether it be a river, a mountain, or whatever, make sure that you have a photo that shows the hot tub in half the photo, and then the actual um, the, the the hot tub, and then whatever the view or amazing thing is in the other half. And always put like a little coffee mug or a drink or or something on the hot tub. And then if you can do it, make sure that you get it at the golden hour as well. So the, the entire landscape that you're showing off is, is perfectly golden, right? If you can nail that photo in almost any market where you have that ability and make it your first photo, you're going to see an absolute increase in your revenue. You wouldn't believe the amount of locations that, uh, or sorry, the amount of like top properties where that's their first photo. Golden hour, beautiful views with a, with a hot tub and a drink and you can see the steam coming up. It's one of the best photos that there is in the entire Airbnb game. Fun. Yeah, all, right. all right, man. Thanks, guys. Uh, I'm, uh, we appreciate it. Um, and hopefully we'll see you guys at the event. We're super excited to talk more than just amenities with you. And if you have any questions, feel free to, to reach out to us. Make sure you follow us. Uh, let me put out, let me close these so they can actually see our stuff again. There we go. You've got myself. I'm at Kenny underscore Bedwell. And then John at the Airbnb data guy. We put out free content there. We're not just about paid events. We're also about free content. So just follow us and check our stuff out. Um, but uh, yeah, we appreciate it. And um, we'll, we'll see you guys uh, hopefully in June. See you, everybody.